Welcome to this presentation on digital operations. My name is Jan van Wiegen and I'm a faculty member at the Kellogg School of Management at Northwestern University. During this presentation, I will share a framework that my co-author, Robert Boote from the University of Leuven and I developed to diagnose the extent to which an operation is currently digital and to guide strategic future directions of digitization. To focus our thoughts, let me be explicit about the unit of our analysis. During the last two decades, the internet has given rise to new internet-based companies like Amazon, Alibaba, Uber. Without any legacy systems, they built their operations immediately fully digital. But these are not the companies I want to address. Rather, this presentation is for the enormous rest of the economy, the traditional organizations that are now witnessing the digital transformation. And they are asking, what does it mean to digitize my operations and how do I go about it? Let me propose a framework to discuss what digital operations is and then to build upon that two specific dimensions. One, autonomous automation and the other one, smart execution. What do we mean by digital operations? The word digital derives from the Latin word digitus, which is finger. So digital now means anything that is countable or quantified in bits and bytes. The word operations also derives from the Latin word opus, and it means work. So let's think of digital operations as meaning that the workflow is digitally supported, if not fully executed. So notice the difference. Supporting means enabling, facilitating human execution. Digitally executed means automated. The first step of digital operations is to digitize the work instructions, which tell the operator how to perform a task. Note that this is different from a manual in PDF or a manual on a website that gives one-way information to the operator. The key difference is that digital operations should capture the reverse flow of operations from the operator. In a checklist, the operator logs information about a product or an installation. And this feedback information can take many forms, a simple check, a value, an answer to a multiple choice, or even uploading a drawing or a picture. Only upon checking the green button can the operator proceed to the next task. Hence, the name of the company with which we collaborated, Proceedix. Good work instructions ensure uniformity in execution and reduce mistakes, thereby speeding up work and increasing efficiency. And for which workflows are digital work instructions most valuable? Proceedix targets the deskless workforce. More than 80% of operations are still paper-based, which we will refer to as digital level zero the absence of any digital operations. Moving to digital work instructions on a siloed application, such as a phone or a tablet, is level one. This allows instructions to be personalized, maybe depending on the experience of the operator, to be used for new operator training. It allows for a workflow with much variety and complexity. This is facilitated by moving to an enterprise data platform, which we will refer to as digital level two. This can be a private network, like 7-Eleven started, which has the benefit of data security. But moving to the internet allows easy interaction with value chain partners, we'll refer to this as digital level three, and leveraging the cloud yields scalability and robustness, level four. Yet the ultimate dream of digital operations is to also connect all machines, devices, and even the people to the data platform and we shall refer to that as level number five. A nice example of digital level five can be viewed from the aspect of a control tower, which we're all very familiar with when we go to the airport, at least during regular times before COVID. This control tower can now be digitized. And then we talk about a digital control tower, which gives you full visibility over all workflows. This aspect can be moved also towards the supply chain. A digital control tower of your supply chain 
gives you visibility of all the events and all the milestones across the entire network. You now can add simple control algorithms that send you alerts whenever you're about to miss a service level agreement or something else that may happen. Operators can resolve these issues in real time. We can move that even to a higher level and start using more sophisticated algorithms to provide decision support to the agents who then make their decisions based on what these intelligent algorithms or agents recommend. We will refer to that as smart decision making. And fourth, we could move even further. Intelligent agents themselves, the algorithms, run the supply network decisions without any human intervention, which we will refer to as autonomous automation. However, rather than having a seemingly linear progression, we believe it is insightful to distinguish smart control from automation. We can represent this in a simple two by two matrix. We can take digitization as given, and then we can focus on two dimensions. On the horizontal axis, we increase the level of smartness embedded in the control rules that govern the operation. On the vertical axis, we focus on who is doing the work. Is it human operators or is it the machine or the algorithm that performs the activities in the supply chain or in the operation as a whole? So what can we do with this framework, this two by two matrix? I believe there's like two things I'd like to focus on. First, we can use it as a diagnostic. And second of all, we can also ask, where could we go next? What other strategic directions could we consider? For example, we've done a diagnostic of the company Tonino, which is a company that focuses on ethical fishing of tuna. It is based in Costa Rica. What we did is we looked at the value chain and evaluated their level of digitization their level of automation and their level of smart algorithm use for each of the major processes in their value chain. The next step then is where to go next. Do we increase the level of automation? Do we focus on more smart decision support? Or do we try to do both at the same time and move along the diagonal? Just like we did for the levels of digitization, we can also include levels of automation. Currently, we see an increased deployment of what we call supervised automation. We'll refer to this as level number one. For example, you may have heard of if this, then that. These are companies that actually use very simple computer logic, if then else statements that allow users to do more with the many apps or IoT devices that they have. You may already be using this to control your smart home. These procedural statements are also used in robotic process automation, which is popular increasingly so in administrative processes. Okay. Yet automation requires a little bit more nuance. What does it really mean to say that tasks happen automatically? You know, one could think it's without human intervention, but I think that's kind of a strong level. It's always kind of insightful to look at where these words come from. And now we can add a little bit of Greek. I don't speak Greek, but uh, I do know that the word auto means self. And if we add to that menos, which means mind, you get to the word automatos. And my Greek colleagues obviously know this much better. But this tells us that automatic means, as we said earlier, done or produced as if by machine. Sometimes we say like it's without thinking. In contrast, if we add the word nomos to auto, we get the word autonomous. And autonomous has to do with the fact that you are capable or you're operating using your own laws, your own control laws, meaning without anybody else's intervention. So in the context of our discussion here, I'd really like to separate automation as the asset assignment. We're talking about an activity or a task being performed by a machine versus the human. But the degree to which the human or the machine is operating independently from others 
That's the degree of autonomy. And this is exactly where I'd like you to think about who has the control rule and in whose head, in the human or in the machine, is that control, control rule. Industry 4.0 is a term that originated in Germany. Sometimes it's also referred to as the fourth industrial revolution and it really refers to digitally connected smart systems. This means that using data coming both from Internet of Things kind of devices such as sensors together with what I referred to earlier as the Internet of People, meaning capturing all the information of the human operators, you use this data to then run algorithms that effectively perform a specific task. Last year, an uncrewed surface vessel, a USV, made a journey from the UK delivering oysters to Ostend in Belgium and it then returned with Belgian beer back to the UK. This vessel relied on multiple sensors to safely navigate what is one of the busiest shipping lanes in the world. Leave it used sonar, radar, lidar, camera, infrared cameras, GPS sensors, and the boat owners say that this trip was the first commercial crossing of the North Sea to be made by an autonomous vessel. Now that was interesting. To what degree is this autonomous? It's operator who was remotely accessing all the video camera footage, the thermal imaging, radar through the boat, as well as listen live to any of the ship's surroundings and even could communicate with others in the vicinity. So it's a beautiful example of what I would say almost remote control of a ship. And to me, this is an example of supervised automation. And it begs the question, what would it take to move to autonomous automation? The number of sensor combinations needed for autonomous driving of vehicles or these vessels is exceedingly large such that one can no longer write a computer program that says if this then do that. Okay. Rather we move to what we refer to as smart level 3 which is machine learning. There's many definitions on that but for our purposes I just want to refer to algorithms that effectively perform a specific task but the important part of it is without using explicit instructions. Rather, they rely on patterns and inference instead. A famous example is AlphaGo, which was developed by Google's DeepMind, started in the UK and was purchased by Google. The key here was that the machine learned by itself. Instead of using brute force to calculate all possibilities, AlphaGo used reinforcement learning and neural networks to mimic the learning process of a human brain. What was interesting is that the system was not pre-programmed, but it was fed data of historic games and then the game computer itself could play against itself and improve its win rate through trial and error. Scientists didn't expect this to happen for a decade. We have applied deep reinforcement learning algorithms to inventory management and specifically to the classic dual sourcing or dual mode problem. The basic model of this is that you can supply a warehouse using either a fast mode, which is fast, as the name it says, but comes at a higher cost than the regular mode or the slow mode, which is cheaper, but would take a longer lead time. We find that these, the policy of the deep reinforcement learning algorithm did converge to near optimal policies. So this is great news that we can have smart policies utilizing artificial intelligence, but what does this mean in terms of automation? Okay. Can the algorithms replace the human to arrive at autonomous automation? Robert and I would advocate caution, and to explain our caution, we should differentiate between these different levels of automation, and so we are really talking about autonomous automation. To clarify that uh, statement, we had to make our 2 by 2 matrix a bit more detailed. The idea is that there is a green zone in this matrix where you can increase your level of smart algorithms without increasing the level of automation. Or if you really are exceedingly good in your prediction algorithms, you could move up on the vertical axis. But the point we wanted to make here is that there is a zone that we do not believe one should be in.
And as an example of that, we may think of what happened with the 737 Boeing MAX, okay, with the famous MCAT system that relied on one sensor. So we would call that smart level one and that almost was operated in full autonomous automation mode. This concludes our presentation. Thank you for your attention.